Okay. Show me. Hi, right, fellas, I'm ready to fudge. Oh my gosh! That's not me, that's that cockroach Tony Montana! Do what the black people on that motherfucking wall of fame now! Is that what you want? I want you to be a hockey player! I am a hockey player! All right, I'm not a fucking athlete. This is my fucking way. This is how I win. You go in pieces, asshole. The Where We Gems Movie Podcast. Your home for the most underrated and underappreciated films. Hello and welcome to episode 17 of There Will Be Gems Movie Podcast. The place where we're always giving you the shittiest and hottest takes on movies you may or may not have heard of. I have here with me tonight, the man who sometimes forgets to check the phone for data. Ryan. (laughs) I never. (laughs) We have the man who subjects himself to a marathon of the entire Harry Potter franchise, John. Is that why you had a stressful day? No, that <laughs> that was that was other stuff. I finished that like a week ago. Now we're watching The Hobbit. And oh god, ropes. And lastly, your host for the night, the man who will eat an entire pizza then hide the box under the couch. Tyler. You hit the box on the couch? It was a recurring thing as a child. Oh, <laughs> well, I, thought you meant like, I thought you meant recently. I was like, I haven't seen no pizzas. I check underneath the couch every night. I'm still a child at heart. You just check under the wrong couch. <laughs> I guess so. Under the couch upstairs. <laughs> that, would be, that would be a power That's... play. Because I clean it under here all the time. Because my shit falls underneath here all the time. At some uh, at some point during my childhood, my father may or may not have moved the couch to find an entire arsenal of pizza boxes. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. Entire arsenal. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to war. Because if I put it in the trash, I'd get caught. Because I'd be like, oh, I'm home from school. I'm going to order Domino's. I have to be young, dumb, and full of cum. Young, dumb, and full of Domino's. Ugh. That's you. Ugh. 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 I never make the, I, I can't like even like eat Domino's anymore. I just have made that mistake too many times. That's how I feel with Pizza Hut. Yeah, Pizza oh, Hut. We we oh. got burned real bad on uh, DoorDash a couple months ago. We're like, we're never eating here again. Who who is the this savage that got like... uh, Little Caesars? Oh me. Oh God, Tyler. I was hoping yeah, you but... said Joe. Nah. Oh, the other day. Yeah. Oh yeah, that wasn't me. Okay. I just sometimes, sometimes like every once in a while at work, I grab like the lunch combo. Oh God, why? Because it's deep dish and it's five dollars, and you get a soda with it too, and it's only half a pizza. It's perfect. No, but yeah, Joe went and got the full, full on like five dollar like <laughs> little Caesar pizza hut special. I saw that. I'm like, if he needs a couple bucks, I'll, I'll give him a couple bucks. I'm get him a good. <laughs> sometimes you just need that little Caesies. I guess so. Yeah. I mean, where, where even is you'd have to kind of go out of your way to get a little Caesars from around here like it's not worth driving 10 minutes to yeah but you gotta drive like across Chicopee to get it it's not like it's down yeah, the yeah, yeah. Where you are. You're out in the... yeah we ba- we basically live in Little Ludlow no it's that's like that's, that's what like I call it seven minutes away yeah, it's like a seven. it's a yeah, but you gotta go down that like annoying road where like cops like to be, so you can't speed. No, you just get off on the pike. You hit uh, no. There's the cops. Road, yeah. You don't. If you get off the on the pike, pike dude, you're yeah. wilding. That it's is way so quicker. much more. It might be, but it's just like nah, it's not the move for little Caesars. Come on, man. <laughs> I think that's not quick. Cut the Walmart parking lot. Yeah, but then you got to slow down in the parking lot. No, you don't go past. No, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Did everyone go into Dollar Tree? Hit a, you fucking hit Abuela. <laughs> Abuela. Oh my god. Cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely can't say <laughs> shit like this. So what's our topic this week? <laughs> <laughs> I'm done with this. So, uh, so our topic this week <laughs> was our... <laughs> Our favorite John Travolta movie. Uh, who's going first? And, ju- and just to, just to be clear, it doesn't have to star John Travolta. It just has to. He just has to be in it. Um, mine's The Punisher with Tom. Spurrier. I had a f- that was my guess for you. I knew yeah. you were. 
You're gonna pick the Punisher. He plays such a like maniacal fuck in that in that movie. He's like really good. That movie's like yeah. actually not bad for like a like an early 2000 superhero movie. I've honestly never seen it because when it came out, I was still like not like not in the go to see R rated movies in the theaters yeah. status. No, it's never got around it's, to it's it. It's pretty good. It's like it still holds up too. I watched it a couple few months ago, probably like right when summer started, and it's still really good. Do you see there's like a movement to like erase punish the Punisher from history and like ban all this stuff? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, it's stupid. They've been trying to do that for like literally like thirty years though. So good luck. <laughs> Literally, there's a huge campaign in the 90s when, like, all that bullshit with violence was going on with, like, Mortal Kombat and a whole bunch of shit. Like, they tried to ban the Punisher, too. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Maybe even she shouldn't be so punished. They wouldn't have to. I mean, you know, if mommy doesn't Does it, it, she gonna get punished. Isn't there... Isn't he, uh, not too opposed to sexual assault or something yeah yeah, there were yeah well yeah those were comics in like the 80s i believe um where yeah some of that shit i think he's not like a fucking hero he's like a he's like an anti-hero you know he does good shit but he's also pretty fucked up those were in the 80s it don't count yeah i mean like (laughs) yeah i mean yeah but i mean the parents are more worried about the gun violence that they were saying they didn't care about the other stuff oh yeah I, I I feel like that's changed. I feel like that's what they care about now. <laughs> yeah, there was like a huge like um cancel culture about violence in like the nineties. Yeah. I see. So what was going on before the internet? Uh, yeah. It was, yeah. <laughs> it just with wow. random shit like it was mostly like video games and shit too and like comics and Remember- Remember the Eminem cancel culture in like the early two thousands, where they're blaming like Eminem and Marilyn Manson for Columbine? Yeah, it was stupid. <laughs> yeah, that was wild. Yeah, that's silly. It literally <laughs> made no sense. Really. It's that damn Marilyn Manson. That's why they shot everyone. Carolyn Manson. Marlon Manson. Yeah, Marvin. Marvin Manson. All right, Ryan. What's yours? Uh, it's gotta be Pulp Fiction. Solid. That was my guess uh, for you no. too. <laughs> I like. I literally went through his discography. I'm like, yeah, it's Pulp Fiction. Discography. Yeah, he honest. Uh, I did that too. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> Same thing. Yeah. John Bolt is a fucking I, legend. I did that too, and I kind of like expected a more impressive catalog of movies than he it's actually really, has. It's really not that impressive. Yeah, he really, has a couple. I mean, of... like, he hit a giant like early on. Yeah. He had a little pat. He has like little patches. Yeah, but he he's, really. There's a lot him. of shit. There's a lot of shit though. Yeah, like Battlefield Earth. Just, and he, there's just like a bunch of movies like I just never even heard of, like Face Off. Like, no, Face I've off. heard of Face Off. I've never seen it. Man for bad. <laughs> like Grease. Never heard I'm of. I'm assuming Grease. it's bad. They put it on Sci-Fi. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah, they they're not known for their best uh, movies. That's true. Yeah. Usually not. That's where Ghost Ship lives. <laughs> Ghost Ship. I used that to love Ghost, Ghost Ship. Lives. I thought Ghost Ship was such a dope movie when I was younger, and then I watched it when I was like 27, and I was like, wow, this movie's bad. Yeah, that movie does not hold up. The only yeah. good scene is the beginning scene. That's it. The beginning scene's dope, and the set design is actually insane. Like, that stuff's good, but everything else about the movie is just awful. Fair. Yeah. What's your movie, Tyler? Uh, my movie, uh, it's also a Brian De Palma film with John Travolta, and that is Carrie. I like Carrie a lot. I think Carrie is one of the best horror movies of all time, and I think that it really comes down to, uh, the Brian De Palma directing style. Uh, he's got a very unique look to his movies that I like, and that's probably why I simp over it. But that one edges this movie out for me. Called so I'm gonna go with Carrie. Did you? Yeah, I, 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 I 100% knew that's what you are going to pick. I'm only looking at a carry poster about four feet away from my face framed on the wall right now, so... <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, speaking of Mr. De Palma, I guess that will bring us in tonight's film, and that is his 1981 crime thriller, Blowout. Oh, I thought we were watching Untouchables. I watched the wrong movie. I thought we were watching Scooby-Doo. <laughs> Scooby Doo, Scooby Doo, two, Electric Boogaloo. 
No, it was no. Monsters Unleashed. Oh, uh, there, was, there was actually a Scooby Doo too. Yeah, there was. Oh, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah there was. Allegedly. Yeah, James Gunn wrote the script. <laughs> For, yeah, that's right. Yeah. What cat did you strangle to get that? The cat that you hired, that's her voice. You mean you didn't dub that? No. That's hers? Yeah. Hey, look, there's someone on the bridge. Oh, let's not worry about that. He's staring right at us. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, they, they erased the tapes. What are they gonna be doing, trying to kill you next? You're fucking nuts. Hey, okay, calm down. Now the sound is very clear. Picture that's Nobody believed it. They'd say I made it up in a lab and they'd be right. Well, who's ever in on this thing has contacts with the police because they want McRyan to sink without a trace. They don't want to hear about my gunshot. There are still loose ends. Witnesses. The girl, I've decided to terminate her. Ah! Now that's a scream! <laughs> what did you think of the blowout? Eh, that was all right. It blew out. I enjoyed it. <laughs> it was a movie. Very suspenseful. I didn't I feel agree. suspenseful. I didn't feel feel any really? suspense during this. Yeah, and I watched it twice. Huh? Because... I think this is a pretty by the no- like. I don't think it's like reinventing the wheel. I think it's it's a pretty by the number, just like good crime mystery. Yeah. But I think it like literally is like might be among like the best crime mysteries like ever made. I don't know about that, but like of not like of just like these regular just like kind of like crime thrillers. Like what's what's like a better one? Um, you clearly never seen iRobot. It's not even a crime thriller. Sure it is. It's got Will Smith. Oh yeah, Will Robots. Smith, known for his crime thriller. Yeah. <laughs> With such movies like Men in Black. And then and, uh, <laughs> and After Earth. Enemy of the State. Sure. Yeah. I, well, Wild well, Wild West. Known for. Is that a crime thriller? Isn't that a crime? I don't think. I don't think. I can't think of one crime thriller with... I, the only crime movie I can even think of at all with him in it is, like, Suicide Club. Suicide and Club? That's... that's pr- or not Club. What am I calling it? Club. Suicide Squad. Jesus Christ, Tyler. I was thinking of the good movie with Suicide in its name. Uh, okay, Boomer. Boomer. <laughs> Fair. Yeah, I mean, yeah. What, what were you saying? Yeah, I was. Yeah, I'm saying Will Smith is. I don't know what I'm saying. You know. What anyways. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're saying. All right. All right. But anyways, we get this movie starts off like all of uh Brian De Palma starts off his movies starting in the mid '70s uh, with Naked Women. I like this little this little like thing he's got going off the beginning where you just get this like crappy looking lo- crappy looking little low budget horror movie you think yeah. you're watching, but then you find out you're not watching it. You're watching the characters watch it because you watch the movie. They're working on. A movie. It's fucking wild, and this is him poking a little fun at himself because he just made a bunch of horror movies up until this point. I think that's a cool little knock. Wait, didn't he make? Uh, the, didn't he already make the Intentionals by this point? No, Intentionals was made late eighties. Thought that, it was nineteen eighty. That game sucks. Nah. He like he made Scarface, and then people trusted him with the budget. Even though that movie didn't do very well, I think that movie's highly overrated and not that great. No, Basically, everyone I talk to, yeah, says the same thing. It's like it's the really people they just, movie. yeah, they pick out like good scenes of like this two hour and forty minute movie, and the rest of it's just not great. It's, yeah, it's. In in my in my mind, it's very mediocre. I also do not like it. Yeah, but yeah, he he's kind of like during from the mid to like late late seventies and early eighties, he kind of had a good string of movies. This was towards the end of it, and then he got Scarface and made stuff like The Untouchables. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but 
This is kind of his bread and butter type of movies, and that's like it's. These are like my favorite movies to just like watch, like on any time on average, just like kind of like mystery movies, like this. And I really like the like the camera work and the soundtrack. Uh, that's kind of like a signature stamp for me. A lot of his movies look and sound like this. I will yeah. say the the basis of all that is very good in this movie. But I can't take John Travolta serious in anything. Why? Why? I thought he. I thought he was great in this movie. I think he. I think he's great. It's just like every time I see him, I just see Grease. I've never seen Grease. Well, you're missing out, man. Am I? <laughs> I've avoided that movie my entire life because I'm just not interested. Well, it's a great musical. Well, that's your first problem. I was it's also. I was also Kaniki in Grease when I um when I was in that middle school. We haven't seen it, so that that word means nothing. You could have said you're the hamburglar, and I would have believed you. Oh, <laughs> I was also the hamburglar. Ah. Nice. So we, f- so John Travolta plays a sound technician on this movie named Jack Chair Jack Terry, and they're watching this rough cut of the movie, and the director who's been working off John now, John's character, and the last several projects, starts giving him shit about his wind effects and his, the shitty scream that the actress had. And he just says, get the fuck out there and record me some new wind because I'm sick of this old shit. And that just throws us right into the plot, right into the, the plot of this movie, which yeah. is great. He gets moving right away. It really it it does, and I can appreciate it for that. But it yeah, lost movie... it lost me in the middle, huh? Yeah, and I watched I thought... it twice. If anything, like I think I get lost like a little bit at the end. There's something that's a little bit of an eye roll for me, but like it that's real. But well, that's I, really. Uh, I think I think I know what you're talking about. But yeah, we'll get into that. Yeah, I'll get to that later. Yeah, I think I think I know exactly what you're talking about. But uh... yeah, so John Travolta's character is going ahead and recording some sound. Uh, new wind effects for this movie and all of a sudden he hears a big bang and Theory. watches yeah and sees his car drive off the road into the lake uh near where he's recording bridge he's actually recording bridge on the sound above it and like uh i i wouldn't have jumped in the water but i guess like like a good samaritan john travolta jumped right in the water well wasn't he see. like a cop no, he was a sound he, technician. No, he was a cop. Oh, yeah, he, oh, he used yeah. to be a cop. He was yeah, in the military he, and he was a cop. Yeah. Yeah. I and guess now he's I guess. Contact. And then he was a not then he was a not cop following cops. Yeah. <laughs> and then the cop got copped. Yeah. Everyone, everyone's a cop, cop. in this movie. <laughs> cops. The cop got caught. The cop got got. <laughs> he arrested himself under perjury of the law. <laughs> himself with the handcuffs and in uh, his neck. So he jumps in and sees a woman still alive with this car filling up and uh, the the driver, old man, bleeding from the face. So he, he's gone. He's going for the woman. He's and yeah, yeah. He, and can't, he, he can't fuck the old guy. So <laughs> yeah. And he manages to smash the window and get the woman out. Which is b- unbelievable, by the way. She was down. Uh, not really. I, I I don't have any problem with this part. Uh, windows from the eighties. I'm sure they were pretty breakable. Okay, I'll I'll give you that. But I don't know. It, like, with, with the... We're not talking about today's standard of windows. Yeah. This is like I think it's definitely plausible. We're uh, I think it's absolutely plausible. Man, eh, maybe. I don't. I don't think there was anything like outlandish about the scene. And the way they did a good job of like making the car fill up, so this woman just wasn't like already drowned. So like it would make sense that he had this time before yeah. she yeah. suffocated. Well, actually, it's easier to break the window when the car is filled up. Well, the, the car are, you can open the you can't open the door if the car isn't filled up. That is correct too. By the time like he smashed the window, it was filled up. But like yeah. it made yeah. sense that he had time to like mm-hmm. well, the girl didn't drown. Kind he had time to walk. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't see John Travolta being a strong man, you know what I mean? He was probably jacked, like, in the 70s. Not jacked, but he was probably in pretty good shape in the 70s. Yeah, cocaine helps. I mean, like, 
He was like, he was a dancer, so he has to be in good shape. <laughs> he was <laughs> in shape. He was a dancer. Yeah. That's so, like, even notice, like, no homo, but he's real graceful in this movie. Like, he just, he is... like, the way he, the way he walks is, like, very, like, swift. Yeah, he got them. Dan- he got them dancer cheeks. Yeah, <laughs> he's, just, <laughs> he got them, very, he's like they're very graceful. Yeah, you like Jan and Tatum. Mm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Why wasn't he? Yeah, he should have been in Magic Mike too. With them cheeks. Nah, they had Matthew McConaughey. He's that is cool. true. Yeah, yeah. He's cool old guy. I miss him with a mustache. <laughs> Anyways, date rapey old guy. <laughs> No, I mean, not in Dallas Buyers Club. No, he's just, no, he's AIDS old guy in that. He's AIDS old guy, yeah, he's <laughs> AIDS McConaughey. He's an old, old white racist AIDS guy. <laughs> Is he racist? I think he's everything just all in capsule. He's kind of like what you'd expect out of someone from Texas in the 80s. Okay, yeah, yeah he was racist. Like, he's, he's not a, like, he's a he's stereotype, like, yeah. Yeah. He's a stereotypical I hate everyone who's not a straight white guy. Hmm. Yeah. Like Hank Hill. Daddy Hank. Daddy? uh, I don't know about that. Does does, does Hank a... Alright, I'm just not gonna comment on Hank Hill. Yeah, don't don't touch the the Lord Hank, okay? Alright. Yeah. I abstained. Okay. So he gets her out of the car, and they go to a hospital... And everybody at the hospital seems to be trying to hush the whole incident of her being in the car. And that's when you find out that the male passenger that was killed was actually Governor McRyan, who was, who we see earlier uh, uh, in the movie on a commercial. Uh, a TV movie. He was going to be the president. He was likely going to be the next president of the United States. He was very favorite if he was going to run. And so they are all these people trying to say, oh, don't say anything about the girl. But their excuse is save his family some dignity because he's already dead. And the only one it's hurting is his wife. And that, that does sound plausible. That sounds believable. I think you could convince someone what's going on, especially since he was like a favorable looking figure. Yeah. Especially in a time of naivety, where not everybody's recording everything around them. D. Mr. Mr. Jack Terry here didn't jump into this lake and save this woman for nothing. So, of course, he's going to go in the room and uh, chat it up with her. And adamantly, adamantly uh, demand uh, a date with a drink for saving her life. He's very persistent in his movies. Do you think that's just what it was like in the 80s? Like, he just kind of... Oh, what it was for John Travolta. Very Probably. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Have you seen Saturday Night Fever? I feel, you you still see, still take a drink with me. You see my dancing? <laughs> the Bee Gees, man, stay alive. <laughs> yeah. Sandy. The quick step from the Bee Gees to a BJ. Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Nothing like getting your dick sucked, man, I'm telling you. <laughs> so he's persuaded uh, he's persuaded by uh, Governor McRyan's associate to smuggle her basically out of the back of the hospital and afterwards he goes back with his sound equipment and listens to the audio recording and he distinctly hears a gunshot just before he hears the tire blow out and then he learns from a news report seemingly by coincidence that there was also a photographer on the set. And then there was also a photographer uh, in the park that night that shot yeah. pictures of the whole accident. And you do see him run away when he jumps in the water. The guy's like, whoa, what the fuck? Yeah, but really... before, so hold on. before we get, before like we found out that was an actual person, I'm like, did they just like shoot the scene <laughs> and there was an extra who just forgot to get off the set? <laughs> and they were like, well, we just sank the car. We can't reshoot this. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was one hundred percent what I thought. I'm like, let's see, eighties are like, yeah, we we can't redo that. It's not possible. <laughs> no, nah, it's indeed a plot point. gone. It was indeed a plot point, and I was, it's funny. I was actually, I like somehow missed that the first time I saw this movie, and I was like looking for it. I was like, oh, he was there. Yeah, oh, I, was I, was, I was like, I was just like, what the fuck? Why is there extra? <laughs> 
Or like, so, or some, like a sound guy or something. He like comes right out. He comes like out of nowhere too. He just yeah. like comes like, ah, shit. That's what confused me because he like came out from under the bridge. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, he was not supposed to be there. There's no <laughs> way. Good shit. That's so, what I'm saying. Manny. So this guy, this guy, Car- uh, you find out, uh, it's a photographer named Manny Carp. And he sells the stills from the accidents of the local tabloids, so it's all over the papers now. But like, like they had it hushed up. There's no mention of like the girl with them or anything. So, uh, being a sound guy, which I think I love these like little like the the way they like let us like peek into his head, where like they have these moments where like you just see him like picturing everything he's hearing on the sound. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think that was that was so cool. Yeah, that's pretty dope. Uh, pretty yeah. Cool. Just the way uh, I like I really noticed at this time just like the way like the camera moves in this movie and they frame the shots. Like it's not typical. And I think like it adds like a di- it makes this like movie like a little bit unique because of that. It's almost feel like it's supposed to be like high class, but it's like it's not. I don't know. But I really like that shit. So, he he can't really get this whole so this whole gunshot suspicion out of his head. So he goes ahead and takes these pictures from the tabloids, uh, takes his own like little quick shots and whatever it is. I don't know what you actually call it, and makes like a crude little movie and syncs the audio that he recorded with it, and it starts to become suspicious that it was some type of political assassination. Uh, so. What I think is really cool at this point is these are all, like, really convenient, like, almost unbelievable things that are all connecting, but they're, they still are in the, are still plausible, plausible in the movies, like, seems to, like, connect them in a way where I'm not, like, this is dumb. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, I don't find, like, the stuff, like, dumb. Yeah, and that's kind of, like, where a lot of these movies fall, like, fall. There's just something that's just, like, wacky or just, just yeah. too... A little bit too implausible. I think the only like r- implausible thing is the fact that John Travolta listened to the plot w- in the middle of a setup. Yep. That that was like that's it. That's like the most unbelievable thing. What do you mean? Listen to the plot. Well, not, oh, not not only did he happen to be there when the accident happened, but there just happened to be a guy recording to as a setup. Oh, I get what you're saying. And he happened yeah. to to be able to hear the gunshot. Oh my god. Oh my god, he's been shot. <laughs> Sandy! <laughs> oh my god, he's been shot. Is there a girl in the car? I'm going to jump in the water. Oh my god. Yeah. So, <laughs> then we start to see the other side of this, because uh, we fall Sally, the woman he, Paul, he pulled out of the <clears throat> car, uh, going about her business. Yeah, we, and... can, we can live like Jack and Sally if we want. <laughs> I was fucking dead when you pointed that out. <laughs> fucking so good stupid but I love it anyways <laughs> yeah so we start following her around and then you start to then you see her meet up with the photographer actually and you start to find out that those two are co-conspirators and this was all set up and it's something that they've done before but it doesn't appear like either of them know that anyone was supposed to get shot or killed it's just that they have a history of setting each other, of setting men up in uncompromising positions. Oh, that greaseball uh, money known. Greaseball money stuff. That guy's like a walking greaseball, the photographer. Oh my god. <laughs> that guy looks like the kind of guy that would just like eat a McDonald's cheeseburger and throw the wrapper on the floor <laughs> and just go about his day. If you put two pieces of bread between his head, he'd be like a pastrami sandwich. That's very so sweaty. <laughs> Yeah, that's very specific. It's this guy I used to have a guy used to come into Barstow's who not pastrami but gets salami, and he was a very sweaty man. <laughs> so that's what I picture when I see someone like who looks like that. I'm like, that's a that's a salami boy. Oh Just pastrami God. sounds better. Pastrami yeah. boy. Pastrami boy. Pastrami boy. And then, so during this time, you see Jack going to talk to the cops about what he found, too, in the little crude video he made. And 
they start to show him pictures, and they see this picture of the girl he pulled out of the car uh, with their clothes off with uh, the guy McRyan or with someone else. It was one. Of, it was like a series of the pictures of yeah. that she did with the grind ball. So he now he's tipped off that like this bitch ain't being truthful. <laughs> Just fucking. And then we, and then we take a break from this and go into the C storyline, where. We'll see. Oh, the C store line with uh, Mr. John Lithgow. In... <laughs> oh, I do love me some I, John I fucking, Lithgow. I, I love the John Lithgow character in this movie. He's fucking crazy. I love it. He is pretty cray. He just. Uh, I, I don't know why John Lithgow is able to. like He's just typecast as play innocent guy, but be fucking. but actually be a fucking psychotic person. Yeah, like in Cliffhanger? Holy shit. Like in Dexter? <laughs> I've never seen Dexter. He plays so, like. Uh, yeah, he plays a serial killer. Oh, okay. Yeah. I but see. like, he's like a. He's like a dopey dad. <laughs> yeah. Who like. Is like a very. It was a very, like, clean-cut serial killer. <laughs> Isn't he Dexter's dad or some shit? No, that's that's the guy from The Warriors. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's Here. the guy who likes saying the slur. The new F word. So, we find out a rival, a rival candidate hired Burke, that's Jen Lifkow's character, to... Hook up uh, McRyan with the prostitute and take the pictures so they could publish them, and then he would be embarrassed and drop out of the race because I guess thing, wh- things like that disqualified you from being in a presidential election in 1981. Like what? <laughs> like having pictures come out with you with prostitutes will be enough to get people not to vote for you in, ni- in 1981. Oh, yeah. Nowadays it's just like. <laughs> now it's like, whatever. Whatever. It's like he's got 17. <laughs> We've all been there. He subscribed to 17 OnlyFans, whatever. <laughs> I believe it. Yeah. I would. I am. <laughs> so, the guy that paid him off had, didn't plan to kill him, and then we we find this all out on this like on this telephone call that's tying together some loose ends that we've seen. And we see we saw these little shots of like somebody like stealing the tire out of the shop. Uh, we saw a trunk car get open with a digital sound with a digital tape eraser. What it's that's what it said. Yeah, digital tape uh, eraser. Yep. Uh, for the sound guy that we suspect will come into play when uh, John Travolta's character goes talks to the police. Yeah, which is the the part where he's like listening to like the audio already come up, right? No, that didn't come up yet. We saw this like way before that, and like you see these like creepy shots of like somebody like spying it on him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Because I when we get to that part, I want to point something out. Yeah. So the guy that hired Burke. Had not did did not try to kill him. This guy just went off the map, and now he's trying to cover all these loose ends. By he has to deal with the sound guy, he has to deal with the photographer, and he has to deal with the prostitute. So he's just been killing a bunch of prostitutes so he can make killing her look like it's just a series of murders of prostitutes. Which I thought that side development was wicked cool. Yeah. Uh, that first time where you see her just like grab that, grab some girl and like pull her down like some alley down some hill and just stab her to death. Like I thought he was like, he, he was just hunting for her. And it almost adds like another layer to it when you hear this conversation. Yeah. yeah. I, that, I thought there's a lot, there's a lot of clever things, I think, like that in this movie. And just a lot of cool visuals. So. That's the same yeah. thing. I think like Brian De Palma, at least like. 80s Brian De Palma is like very, like when it comes to like suspense, does it like really well with like stuff like that when he's like sneaking up on her and all of that. Like it's like he does that, like shoot it and like work and like work the sound like really well. Yeah. To, like, really to really like give to give suspense like out of something just out of like shots. He's very good at using the camera as like a means of suspense. Yeah. 
right after I watched this, I said, I'm going to just do a double feature. And I just watched Sisters again after this. And, like, there's some shots in that, too, where, like, he, the way he moves the camera just around the room with the music, it's, like, it's just so good. And he's also got a signature split screen that he uses here, but not to, like, effect I've seen him using in other movies. Yeah. Yeah. He's a fan of the the paradise. Every, literally everyone. The best use of it is in Sisters. It's not the best movie for him, but it's the best use of it. Like, that's uh, where it's, like, showing, um, like, too, uh, it's so good. Ah! Alright, enough about that movie. Nothing about Sisters. I'm not supposed to. Brothers. <laughs> ah, because you guys are brothers. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Yeah. So, at this point, uh, I think the paranoia is really starting to close in onto Jack. And you can tell by and the music. Yeah. We're, uh, so good in this. I want to just listen to the soundtrack of this over and over. All right, so, he kind of draws Sally into her own private investigation of the incidents. And while though initially reluctant, he convinces her because he pretty much comes her, we're fucking dead if you don't do this. I will be fucking dead if you don't help me. And he also opens up to her at this point. And I thought this was a really cool development. It made a lot of sense. He reveals his prior career in the police. And he left after a wiretapping incident gone wrong that led to another cop getting got. I've got cop. Got, got caught. Which is, I thought that was a really cool, believable sequence, and that's like something that's like kind of ignored in movies. That seems like a totally real problem. Yeah, that yeah. could happen. What did you think of the wiretapping issue, John? Yeah, I was, I was thought it was a little crazy. I will say, I thought it was a little wild that like, uh, he like was able to walk in there and kill him in like fifteen seconds. Just like crusty yeah. old guy. I was very conf- I was confused, to, like by like how all that did happen, like insanely fast. Yeah, that was like real fast. Like the guy like immediately suspected something. They could have done that a little better, but like, I th- him, possibly yeah. just taking a dump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I they could have done that part a little better, but I think like the idea of that and like kind of adds to his character too i thought that was really clever so to help investigate the murder uh he said uh jack's jack's character says like he needs more proof and persuades her to get the to go and get the original films from carp because she's the only one that knows where she is because then he can clearly sync the audio with the pictures and find the like the precise position of the blowout and around yeah. this time, uh, he goes back uh, to go. He goes back into his into his office, uh, which is I love this fucking office too. Uh, if you notice, they have like those old crappy uh, like B movies framed up on the wall, like of other movies they produced. Yeah, of, there's eight posters on the wall. I own four of those movies on Blu-ray. <laughs> Just made me chuckle. That's and they're a, all that's terrible. That's a softplex. Yep. There's Never. the incredible the incredible melting man. Food of the gods without warning. What was the last and I forgot what the last one was, but there's four of them that I owned all. <laughs> but anyways, he's listening he's he goes to check his tapes and the and the audio is completely gone. And it's like it's kinda cool how they did this because we already knew that was gonna happen by the phone conversation. With John Lithgow's character, yeah, but usually it, it's it's kind of cool how they did that to like not like I think what you, I don't know where I'm going with this. Me either. I don't know. I liked how they already had the reveal of it because I also I don't know. I, I guess I would have known what was going on, but I there's a chance I would have not understood what was happening, and maybe that's what they that's why they throw that little line in. Maybe people in the 80s were more familiar with how these things are recorded in the sound rolls than people watching it 40 years later. <laughs> so you had a point about the audio recording? 
Yeah, I I want just want to point out that he specifically says it's a blowout multiple times because that's the name of the movie. You gotta have the title in there. If you can. I know. I it just he says it like four times in that scene, and I'm just like, <laughs> I get it. I get it. It's, it's a <laughs> fucking blowout. I get it. I know what a blowout is, John Travolta. Well, I guess you just wanted to hear him. Oh, I hope like they were like there on set, like just say it again, John. They, I swear, they had to have like. There's no way that he would have looked at the script and like, oh, I really gotta say this. Oh my god, <laughs> the blowout. Past that, uh, around this time too, he gets a call. F- he gets a call from the police telling him his tapes are fucking bullshit. And he says, "Yeah, I know all my tapes are gone." So they think he's whacked. He's not getting help from the police. <laughs> Fuck. But he also gets a call from a local talk show host that wants him to come on, and he wants to bring Sally on so he can air the tapes. And after a little bit of fencing, he eventually agrees to it. Even though he wants to leave the girl out of it because he likes her, he doesn't want her to get killed. And he knows. What's the smush? The, he knows. Oh, he's trying to smush. He he should have got to smushing. He he. Sh- Are we talking about he sex? He got goofed. Yeah. Okay, because when he said smushing, I was like, oh yeah, yeah. Missed opportunity there. That so that they. They get all the stuff together, and then they're gonna go meet. They're gonna meet the guy. Then I forgot. It was a little like intermission where she had to leave again because then she gets a call from John Lithgow's character pretending to be the talk show host, like convinced, uh, saying he want now he just wants to meet her at a train station during the Liberty Ball, which is some big parade that is looming in the near future in the city. And he's pretty. John Travolta's character is pretty suspicious of this, and, and he copies the audio tapes, but he can't copy the video, the the picture. So once that's gone, it's gone. Holler if you hear me! Whoa, slow down there, Chief. Looks like we are entering spoiler territory. If you have not seen this film and would prefer for it not to be spoiled, you may want to consider skipping to the timestamp provided below. Thanks for listening. Yeah. And this this is a little iffy, though. Like, if I was him, I would absolutely not let her go off alone and meet this guy. Yeah, she went off alone for the plot. Yeah. Uh, and back to circling back to his wiretap story, he said, I'm going to wire you and I'll listen in. And if he's good, you can give you it. But there's absolutely no reason he should have let her go off. Yeah. But I mean, I still kind of buy it, but I also. I don't know, man. I don't buy it at all. Uh, I would have let her go off, but. No, that was. I see. I think it was more the health, not close he was. Yeah, he needed to sprint out from outside. Yeah, well, he lost. He lost them, didn't he? No, he just they just like kind of walked away, but like he was way outside the building. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was stupid. He should have definitely like been hiding out somewhere. Yeah. Should have been one of those phone booths. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not part right. of that. Yeah, that, yeah that's, how I, that's how I know this movie's in the ages, because there's phone booths. And, like, scenes with phone booths in them. Yeah. So, Good. this... I, so, now that they're in this... Like, this whole... I thought this whole part from the station was, like, dope. Like, just... I, I love the look of it, and... The whole thing, like the whole thing with the sailors and the prostitutes, like it's a little like break up in the tension, uh, which I thought was pretty cool. But you also like see like Burke looming around, so you know that things are not going well for someone with his handy dandy Sandy, <laughs> his handy dandy choke wire watch. I, I oh my god, can I? I love that was that. dope. I love that it. thing. It was much. so cool. It just reminded me of, like, some fucking Bond villain type shit, or, like, Austin Powers. He's literally a Bond villain in this movie. He's this, like, political guy that went off the map, and now he's, like, he's, like, I just killed him. 
we we eliminate it's the same result. I don't see the difference. Yeah, it's fucking <laughs> ridiculous. I love it. He's fucking intense too. No, but he's he, not camping at all in this movie. He no, nah, he's fucking intense. I love it. Oh, oh my god. He's maybe in an RV. Yeah, maybe. Oh my god. He's in a phone booth a lot. Da, 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 da. Bad jokes. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've never seen somebody though like so intense with like such an innocent face. Yeah. Yeah. He he might just kill people in real life. He's too he, good he, at he it. He might be. <laughs> he can get away with it. He's this. got that. He's got that. Like just ah, oh, he looks like a goober. He couldn't hurt a fly. <sighs> As you know, it wasn't me. You gotta believe me. As John Lithgow actually just has a basement full of bodies because everyone just thinks he looks too innocent. We're not accusing John Lithgow of anything. We're just saying it's possible. I it's, like the movie. Where allegedly, he's... John Lithgow has a basement full of bodies. He does like to call people cunts. <laughs> does he? Yeah, yeah, cunt. Yeah, he does. Now, that was from Dexter that you didn't see. Yeah, but Tom says it all the time. <laughs> yeah, no, because it's funny. He's like, you cunt. <laughs> yeah, cunt. He just has like that like confused like John Lithgow look on his face when he says it, too. A, a good it's thing, like uh, something you should watch is like John Lithgow. It's like there's a compilation on YouTube of John Lithgow from Cliffhanger, and it's like all his like lines from the movie, and it's fucking, it's, it's ridiculously funny. I just want to see a compilation of John Lithgow's facial expressions. That would be nice. Yeah, it's pretty funny, including Lord Parquad. Yeah, I know. I never knew he was that until we randomly watched Shrek like three weeks ago. We're just like, let's watch Shrek, man. How did you not know that? His his voice is so distinguishable. That's when I noticed it. Like I heard, I was like, I know that fucking voice, and I realized it was John Lithgow. (laughs) It's so fucking dying. Fucking guy. He's fucking John Lithgow. Don't fucking Lithgow. He's Lord Farquhar. (laughs) Lord Farquhar. Yeah, so we see him choke out another prostitute, <laughs> and <laughs> go on. <laughs> Wait, is that the one in the bathroom? Yeah. Uh, okay. Sort of. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in the bathroom. Yeah, when he's like over the stall, he's like, yeah, well, like, nah. he's like, he's in like the phone things first, and she's giving this in like she's like sucking off the sailor. That like, yeah. like blows his load in twenty seconds. She looks over and he just has this little smile and like weighs a hundred dollar bill. It's fucking hilarious. Yeah, then he goes and chokes her in the bathroom. I like how he like was getting frustrated with it. Yeah. <laughs> he's, just look at her. Oh, yeah he's trying to kill her and he's like getting frustrated that she's not staying in the right position. Like just stay still. Fuck. So I just be like, Can you stay still? Ah. <sighs> Fuck. Right. So then he go he he goes out uh, after killing his hooker, cleans himself off, and sees the woman of the night he's supposed to meet, Sally. And Jack starts to get so, so here's Jack starts to get suspicious when he hears her talking to try to slip her out uh, to try to get her on the train and go somewhere and. Uh, so he has, this is when he has to get out of the car and slip out of range. And even though we already agree it's a little silly that he wouldn't just like be there closer and that he would try to do this wire thing, I thought this was really cool. He had to like figure out where she was uh, by the sound of what he was hearing. Yeah. And that was a really cool aspect. And the whole idea that he just likes sound and like, uh, like is very perceptive to where things are because he's a sound guy. I thought that was like a, a nice little cool aspect. I like that. Well, it felt a little clever to me. Like I do with the sound. Yeah, doing the sound. Okay, so he misses them getting on the train, but he sees he sees her, so he knows where they're going, and he hears uh, her say it. She starts talking out loud where she's going, so he can hear. So he knows where they're going. So he goes back into his car and does this mad dash to the pre. And this is the part where I'm kind of like, <laughs> yep, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yep. <laughs> he does this mad dash to the parade and like almost lays out a million people. Like somehow, like none of these cops like stop him. 
either, but I'll, I'll get, I'll buy behind that they don't want to get run over by the crazy guy driving through the parade. And you can't really, sh- you can't really shoot either because there's a thousand <clears throat> people around. If you miss, like you, like you're gonna hit someone. Crazy Travolta. No, you can't. Just curve the bullet to like that movie you wanted. Like in that movie Willy Wonka. That too. Come with me. <laughs> the lead scene where Willy Wonka see. goes on a shooting spree. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Everybody the, out of my factory. The Gene Wilder one or the yeah, uh, the Gene okay. Wilder. I can I can I, 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 I could I couldn't see it with the giant deaf one, but I can see it with. The I, Gene I, I I've never seen the I've never seen Charlie and Chocolate Factory because that just looks I I don't know I can't take Johnny Depp in roles like that seriously. So I just don't watch those movies. Johnny Depp's fine. It's just I don't know. I it's just That's like, I feel like, like a, there's a level of like what you like what like I expect out of Willy Wonka. And it's not. <laughs> what do you expect t- out of Willy Wonka? Well, no, no, I'm saying, but it's not like the Tim. Ver- it's not like the Tim Burton like vibe where like it's yeah. not. Like, I don't think the movie's bad, but it's like I had an idea of what Willy Wonka is in my head, yeah. and like it's just such a counter to it. Yeah. I don't yeah, like, think there's anything bad with like what Johnny Depp actually did, but I think like the art direction, like the directing, that stuff, just like every decision they made about the movie was just bad. Yeah, I think I think Tim Burton should just stop making ch- children's book type things. Like Dumbo is Ooh, fucking that's, awful. That's what he's been doing forever. Not really. Yeah. I mean, well, Batman is a comic book, which is Batman's good. Well, I just, before that, he was doing he did, like James and the Giant P. Like he, he did that movie. Yeah, I don't think he did that. Did I don't he? think he did it. I don't think he did James and Giant. I don't Peach. think he did James and Peach either. But it, but it's Fact also check. yeah. Uh, he did Nightmare Before Christmas. That's kind of yeah. yeah. That movie fucking sucks. I'm saying it. I don't care. That movie fucking sucks. I think it, I think it sucks too. Okay. We, no, yeah. He he yeah. did not make that. Henry Selleck made James the Giant. Yeah, I was, I was gonna say definitely not Tim Burton. Yeah. It does look Burton. Yeah, though. I think. I think James the Giant. I mean, so I think, he, uh, Tim Burton still made like a ton of. Yeah, he's been. Well, he started off making P. What Pee Wee's Big Adventure wasn't that his first movie? Oh shit, that is right. Yeah. Yeah, that's like, I'm pretty sure it's just... Ah, well, okay. Tim Burton. I'm honest, I'm honestly not that big of a Tim Burton fan. I only really like Mars Batman. Attacks? I think he's... I like Mars Attacks, but yeah. I'm not gonna like... I love Mars Attacks, but I'm not gonna defend that as being, being a good movie. It's not a good movie. <laughs> but yeah, I do I like, like it, right? yeah. It gave, I like it a lot. It gave us Tom the, Jones. Oh, like, do you remember the ending to that? No. The ending to that, like the last shot, is Tom Jones literally steps out into like the top of a mountain, puts his arms out, his music play- starts playing, and a bunch of doves land on him, and it just goes, "It's not unusual," and the fucking credits roll. <laughs> is that how it ends? Literally, that's oh the ending God. of the movie. I need to see this again. I have it on Blu-ray and what? VHS. <laughs> oh, it is. Oh, that's v- right. Yeah, I think I put it in my list actually. On HBO. <laughs> I was like, I need to watch this movie again because it's a fucking. Oh thrill my ride. god, the VH. Oh man, that HBO has the most clutch Studio Ghibli setup. Yeah, they have buy- all of them. Yeah. All right, let's not plug um, HBO now. <laughs> HBO sponsor us. Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah please. We need. Help. We need a couple dollars. I need a new TV. So. Help. I'll, I'll buy the. I'll buy the subscription for myself. <laughs> Don't tell them you're not paying for it. Cause then, then they'll know that Tyler and I are paying for it. <laughs> I, I finally know Mr. HBO is listening to the podcast. It's Walter. <laughs> it's Walter Hermida himself. I'm sorry. No, it'd be Mr. Max. His first name's HBO. Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right. Anyways, back to the movie. Back to the part I have a problem with. Yeah. So <laughs> he goes through this crowd, and then I do like that they make him crash into something. Because that's more realistic than, like, him getting through this and, like, getting to the girl. Mm-hmm. So that was at least good. But then, so the girl gets isolated, and literally, this dude wakes up, like, in an am- like in an ambulance in just so, the nick of time. So I was watching this, I was watching it at work, and, like, I had, like, looked away for, like, a second. So, like, I saw him start going to the parade, and I look back, he's, like, in an ambulance, like, right there. I'm like, how? How does that happen? It's just like at night, and somehow this like girl is still not dead. The girl said he just wakes up like, "Oh God, I I know I can save her." But I'll let that I'll I'll let it slide. That's the part I have beef with, though. I, yeah, I don't yeah. Know what call beef. 
Because the thing about two is like I almost forgive it because this whole sequence with like everything about like from the time he wakes up, like I, it's so it's shot and like sounds so fucking good. Yeah. Wait, oh, I can still hear it in my head, like the just like the way, like the lighting, the fucking the, these big wide shots, like the whole parade, like that fucking insane shot of like him with the backdrop of the American flag. I fucking love it. I would frame that shot and put it on my wall. Do it. Get up on top of that building. How did they? Why did she go up there? <laughs> She just followed. He just followed him. It's like a overlook over the rivers. And then, he, like, she gave him the stuff because they're trying to get away from the prey where they could hear yeah. each other. So she gave, she hands over the stuff, and he just starts ripping up the tape. And you kind of have this like danger moment. And I thought that was really cool. I thought that was got that, that was got dope. that suspense going. Yeah, that so, Brian De Palma suspense. Yeah. So. He's ch- so John Travolta's character is chasing after again, trying to figure out where they were by the sound. But everything's so noisy because the parade and like literal fireworks going off. And he sees in the distance him like that backdrop of the American flag and the fireworks going off, and runs to him to try to save the re- to try to save the day. Once he he's a once buck he gets a dollar he's short, a buck late in a dollar short, as the intensity of the music. Comes to its close, you see him stabbing with stabbing down with his trusty screwdriver that he manages to wrestle away and drive into his chest and stomach area more than a couple times. So <laughs> I thought it was more than that. I thought it was a fury. I, I was making a joke. So, <laughs> all right, punch or twice, a whole flurry, blue, but, if you will, but. Mr. Mr. Lifkoff characters goes down, and unfortunately, he was not able to save his girl because she is there. Because the job is done there, she has been eliminated, and Sally is fucking dead. Dead. And I thought that was cool. That didn't like give us the the cookie cutter happy ending. No, they couldn't. Oh my god, I couldn't save her. Sandy, what happened? (laughs) Oh shit. We were supposed to fly away together. (laughs) Oh my god. So, combined. Then she lives in infamy as her scream becomes used. So, yeah, combined with Burke's death, the death of her, Jack, everyone else, and the film gone, ties up all the loose ends very neatly. And Jack is left as the only one standing with no proof to prove anything to a cover-up or a gunshot. And overcome with sadness, he just listens to the recordings of her voice over and over, becoming obsessed with it. And then we get this last shot. Then we get this last shot of him sitting in a movie theater with his director, producer, watching the cut of the cut of the movie where they had a weak scream right at the beginning and we hear Sally's death scream or as you said she will live forever <laughs> and then the movie fades away as he whimpering whimperingly says it's a good scream as he's covering his ears <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it's so good it's, it's a real good scream it's a good scream it's a good scream well, he, that, that, he's yeah. also very sweaty. He's yeah. always sweaty. <laughs> yeah, he's, but like, he was especially sweaty right at the end. He's a very yeah. sweaty man. That's one pastrami man for you. Yeah. yeah. But this movie's pretty straightforward, but I think there's a lot of good cinematography, a lot of good music, a lot of good directorial choices, really cool setting. I, but, yeah, I will say there's really no bullshit, which I did appreciate that there's no like unnecessary shit in between any of these scenes. It, yeah. was all, it was all pretty much plot related in that. I'll definitely... Yeah, this movie moves pretty moves pretty quick. Yeah. It's only like a buck forty, so I mean it's not super long. Yeah. Don't worry, I'm of course correct with my pick. Of course you are. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> uh all right. I don't know the wind. So <laughs> get ready for ratings. I think I stated my case why I love this, so yeah. Go right into ratings. I'll, I'll go last. John can go first. We can get 
So I'm assuming it's gonna be the lowest. Uh yeah. I mean, it was it was this movie is not my type of movie. Like, I did get bored with it. That's why I had to watch it twice to make sure I remembered it because I didn't really remember a lot of it. And I literally watched it. Yeah, like I watched it what Tuesday night, and then we're watching it. I watched it again earlier today. Uh, just to make sure I could remember this shit to talk about. But, I mean, it, it was a very good movie, like, um, on paper, I guess. It's just not a movie for me. Um, I'm going to come in at a uh, 7.0. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I think had a good time with the movie. There was definitely some forced uh, plot progression. That's uh, a little bit hard to overlook. Um, but even with, like, the little suspenseful moments, the way the story builds, I really enjoyed. With that, I'm gonna give it a 7.6. Alright. So, like you said, yeah, there's a little bit of hokey stuff in there. Uh, that's come... That's actually something I've kind of noticed with, uh, his movies now, where, like, he, I give him knocks on those, but like I think the camera work and music and just direction and acting in this movie is just exceptional. That like it's so exceptional to me that it still kind of evens out to like a pretty deep, pretty good score. It's like one problem I've definitely noticed with Sisters over the years. It's not this like stunning ten out of ten for me. Now I'm like, okay, I I could just say I love this, but it's not perfect. But. Anyways, I'm gonna come. I think pretty high on this. Like, it's pretty sure for a movie, and I think this movie's. I, I'm gonna grant this movie a couple liberties, and I think he really makes up for it with putting a stamp on it. So, having that said, I'm actually gonna give this movie eight point three. Boom. For a grand total of mm. drum roll twenty two point nine. Dope. And that gives us an average score of seven point six. Nice. That's, that's about so where it's... I was right. <laughs> 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 Ryan wins. Pretty fair. And speaking of Ryan, Ryan, what do we have coming towards us next week? You guys may have seen this movie before. Because it, it is, I don't know about popular, but I would say out of this director's um, pool, it's definitely overlooked about what he has. Mm-hmm. And that would be 2013's Prisoners. Prisoners? With no. huge jacked man, Jake Gyllenhaal. Huge Jackman. Okay. Is this like Jack is this man. Dennis Villa Villanova? Yeah, Dennis. Yeah, Dennis Villanova. I mean, the guy that makes amazing movies but never makes any money off the movies. I think yeah. I don't remember if I saw. It. I'm gonna look again, real quick. Like he does all these fantastic it, movies and they never make money. It's so it's annoying. He also made uh, what's that other Jack Jill Hall movie that came out the exact same year? Enemy. I've never uh, seen that. Movie. Isn't, that isn't that also with Jake Jill Hall? Yeah. Yeah. I honestly, owe the, I owe this movie another watch. Hmm. Why? Well, hey, give it. Where can we watch? No, it? no, I did it. I it's it's very um it's very uh it seems to people I people seem to have a pretty high opinion of this movie from what I've seen, <laughs> but like I didn't feel like it was amazing when I saw it. Mm-hmm. I think I was just expecting something different, but uh, I'll leave that. But I, I think I, yeah, I, I think I will this movie another watch anyway. Yeah, where, where can we oh, watch Prisoners? Right? Not Enemy, right? Yeah, Prisoners. I'm, that's why I double checked. I thought there was another move he had with like with Hugh Jackman and Jake Gyllenhaal. That's why yeah. I wanted to check. Hmm. Yeah. If y'all, if y'all got Hulu, you can watch it right on Hulu. Oh, I do have Hulu. Hulu. Oh, you do? Yeah. I'll have to borrow your. I can steal Tyler's Hulu. Yeah, I got rid of Hulu <laughs> like six months ago, and it's like because I never used. it. Honestly, if I wasn't leeching off your Netflix and I had to pick something to get rid of, that's what I would get rid of. What Netflix? I'm leeching off Netflix. Netflix. Yeah, Netflix, yeah, Netflix is garbage. <laughs> yeah. Unless, HBO. Unless they want to sponsor our show, then they're not garbage. I actually have a pretty decent amount of stuff on my watch list for net for Netflix. I think I only have like ten movies, maybe. Yeah. Something like that. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I have way more on HBO. That's because HBO, is, I'm gonna say, it is probably the probably the best streaming service now. It, it, Do you think in so? My opinion. It's I definitely. Guess, the best. I, I don't think they have the big. I don't think they have the biggest, the biggest uh like slew of things. But I think what they have on there, it's 
like all quality for the most part and the fact they do collections for like channels lord of the rings like if you want to watch like anything on like cartoon network especially they have a fuck ton of that uh they have like the movie channel like they have so much shit on there i, I will that's say like, i've, I've been watching hbo content. max more so. that's what i mean they just have good content there is there. there's good quality on there i was really impressed with the studio studio ghibli like yeah. collection i was like this is like literally all of the ones i wanted to watch like yeah. the, the only movie, all of them <laughs> the only like the only premiere studio ghibli movie they don't have on there is grave of the fireflies yeah yeah yeah, and it's and, like and they have all the DC it. shit on there too, which is pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. If you like watching, they got the HBO to bully people around. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I honestly, if I didn't, if I didn't get Netflix for free, I probably wouldn't have it. It's tr- pretty trash. It's the worst yeah. one. Yeah. No, I don't watch much on Netflix. Yeah, yeah. I I switch between HBO Max and Disney Plus a lot now. Oh, I don't really watch. I guess I get rid of Disney Plus. I don't really watch. I every, I go through spurts where I watch Disney Plus. Yeah, I literally just bought my login because I watch shit on it all the time. Yeah, I don't watch. Well, if, Tyler get, if Tyler gets rid of his, I'm gonna I'm gonna cop that. <laughs> I'm not gonna get rid of it because my company gave me a card that pays for it for a year. Yeah. They gave me a free. They get that was one of the that was a present they gave us. They gave us, they sent everybody uh, Disney Plus for a year. It's super random. I think that's is also the cheapest one too. I also think the my the owner of my company probably has stake in it, and probably that was free for them. Stake in it? Yeah. Mm, stake. stake. Well, yeah, like he, it's why did he put a whole stake in it? Well, first you know it's why. a well, it's a woman that owns my company, and uh, she is a uh, um. I know she has stake. And whatever production company made Rocket Man, because when that came out in theaters, she literally said a company wanted to go see Rocket Man. Rocket Man? Yeah, like oh. the the Elton John. Oh, okay. I thought yeah, for yeah. some reason I thought you meant the Rocketeer. I'm like that movie's like, out of the fucking eighties, Tyler. Like we saw this biopic last year get nominated for a bunch of awards and win some Oscars, and we want to do it too. And then they were like, we're burnt out on these music biopics. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> Anyways, I think that concludes this episode. I think so, too. Ryan, I'll give you my Disney Plus login tomorrow. Well, I have Disney Plus if Tyler's yeah. not canceling his. Oh, okay. Yeah, like I have a year, at least a year of it. Oh, okay. I, pay for, probably, I, I literally pay for one streaming service by half. I'm all. honestly <laughs> not worried about paying $8 a month anyway. It's like not something... <laughs> The concerns. Hey, I literally pay for Amazon, and that's it. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say I pay for Amazon, uh, Amazon Disney Plus. Those are the only two. I'm the leech. Yeah. <laughs> I paid for it last year. Oh, did you? Yeah, no, I'm not okay, well, I was paying for I was paying for Amazon for like ten years. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I hope everyone enjoys the rest of the week, and uh, we'll, we'll catch you next week with uh, Prisoners with Huge Jackman. Huge Hell Jackman. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.